chair, council members, and participants, we are now live. Good morning, good morning, good morning. If you give me one quick moment. Pleasure to see all of you here this morning as we are preparing for today's finance committee meeting. Uh, today is Wednesday, March 2nd. Uh, this is the Committee on Finance. I want to thank you all for your attendance this morning. Uh, if you give me one quick second here. Okay, welcome back. Sorry for the brief delay. I hope that gave you a few moments to do some morning yoga as we get prepared for today's Committee on Finance. I uh, understand that state law currently requires that the following announcement be made at the beginning of every remote public hearing as follows. Due to the current public health emergency, City Council meeting committees are currently meeting remotely. We are using Microsoft Teams to make these remote hearings possible. Instruction for how the public may view and offer public testimony at public hearings of council committees are included in the public notices that are published in the Daily News, Inquirer, and Legal Intelligentsia prior to the hearings and can also be found on phlcouncil.com. I now know that the hour has come. Mr. Anuza, will you please call the roll to take attendance? Members that are, are, that are in attendance, will you please indicate that you are present when your name is called? And please say a few brief words a few moments and finding so that your image will be displayed on screen when you speak. Council member Cindy Bass. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chairman and colleagues. I am present. Council member Alan Dom. Morning, Mr. Chair and colleagues present. Council member Helen Ginn. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair, and good morning, colleagues. I am present. Councilmember Curtis Jones, Jr. Good morning, Mr. Chair, colleagues in Philadelphia. I'm present. Councilmember David O. Good morning, uh, Chair. Good morning, colleagues. I'm present as well. Councilmember Maria Quinona Sanchez. 
Good morning, Mr. Chair and colleagues. I am present. Council Member Mark Squilla. Good morning, Mr. Chair and colleagues present. And Chair Green. I am present. Thank you to all my colleagues for being here this morning. Thank you for the witnesses and the viewing public. A quorum of the committee is present and the hearing is now called to order. This is the public hearing of the Committee on Finance regarding bills number 210827, 220116. Mr. Anuzi, will you please read the titles of the bills? Bill number 210827, an ordinance authorizing an increase in the non electoral indebtedness of the city within the, Philadelphia, the Pennsylvania constitutional limit, authorizing the bond committee to sell bonds at public or private negotiated sale to provide funds toward various capital municipal purposes, providing for appropriations to the Sinking Fund Commission for the payment of such bonds, and authorizing agreements to provide credit or payment or liquidity sources for the bonds in connection with issuance of the bonds and certain other actions. Bill number 220116, an ordinance approving the amendment of the fiscal year 2022 capital budget providing for expenditures for the capital, capital purposes of the Philadelphia Gas Works, include, including the supplying of funds in connection therewith, subject to certain constraints and conditions, and acknowledging the receipt of the revised forecast of capital budgets for fiscal years 2023 through 2027 as amended. Thank you, Mr. Ainuzi. Before we begin to hear testimony from the witnesses we have, here for today. Everyone who has been invited to the meeting to testify should be aware that this public hearing is being recorded. Because the hearing is public, participants and viewers should have no expectation, should have no reasonable expectation of privacy. By continuing to be in the meeting, you are consenting to being recorded. Additionally, and prior to recognizing members for the question or comments they have for witnesses, I will note for the record at this time, that we will use a chat feature available in Microsoft Teams to allow members to signify that they wish to be recognized. In order to comply with the Sunshine Act, the chat feature must only be used for this purpose. Uh, Mr. Ayanuzi, will you please call the first witness we have to testify this morning regarding Bill Number 210827. Marissa Waxman, Budget Director for the City of Philadelphia. Great. Good morning, Chairperson. Okay. Good morning, Ms. Waxman. Please state your name for the record and then proceed with your testimony. Great, thank you. Good morning, Chairperson Green and members of the Finance Committee. My name is Marissa Waxman, Budget Director, and with me are Jackie Dunn, City Treasurer, and Tavari Brown, Deputy Budget Director for Capital. I'm here to testify in support of Bill Number 210827, which was introduced on October 14th, 2021. The purpose of this bill is to obtain approval from City Council to authorize an increase in the non-electoral indebtedness of the city within the Pennsylvania constitutional limit. The loan, question requests, the loan in question requests an increase in indebtedness in an amount not to exceed $285 million to fund the city's fiscal year 2022 capital budget that was approved by City Council on June 28, 2021 and amended in December 2021. As of July 1, 2021, the city's legal debt limit was 12.608 uh, 12 billion, and the amount of debt applicable to that limit was 2.182 billion. As a result, the city is under the debt limit by a margin of approximately $12.426 billion. The FY22 capital budget for new general obligation bonds is approximately $275.7 million. The proposed ordinance includes new geo, the new geo loan amount, plus approximately 3.4% uh, for the cost of issuance, bringing the total loan authorization to 285 million. Included in this new authorization, the city's debt limit remains at 2.64% of the 10-year average of assessed value, below the maximum permitted debt threshold of 13.5%, and the 3% threshold, which would require the consent of the electorate. The loan authorization, if approved, would finance capital projects classified for the following purposes and in the following aggregate amounts. The administration provides the following bill adjusted for amendments made during the budget process. Transit, uh, 3.6, uh, 3,640,000. Streets and sanitation, 150,877,000. Municipal buildings, 76,947,000. Parks, recreation, and museums, uh, 30,644,000, economic and community development, 22,892,000, 
all adding up to the $285 million. I respectfully request that you report bill number 210827 out of committee with a favorable recommendation, and I further request that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading at the next session of council. This concludes my testimony, and I'd be happy to answer any questions council might have at this time. Thank you, Ms. Waxman. I um, just have a few quick questions, and also um, for my questions, Ms. Dunn may be needed for the questions as well. Um, you know, I'm understanding that we will be going into our budget process this year. Also, um, there will be additional assessments um, that will occur um, this year as well, and you're waiting to receive information regarding the assessments. Um, how will that impact um, our debt ceiling in the city of Philadelphia with the future assessments? So we would assume that uh, if the assessments go up, then our debt ceiling goes up because it's calculated at that 13.5%. Uh, but obviously, if we borrowed a whole bunch of money, we could get closer to it. Uh, but if, as we um, hope the assessments go up, but there isn't a dramatic change in the amount of our indebtedness, we will not get closer to that debt ceiling. Okay. And then for uh, future um, capital, for the capital program, which we have the six-year capital program, which will be come up during this year's budget process, um, and also with the current um, bipartisan infrastructure bill, um, is there, assuming there's capacity, what type of impact do you think that will have in our future debt? So that is what we're looking at right now as we put together the FY23 capital budget and the capital program through FY27. But we do anticipate that while some of the new federal dollars won't have matches, we're hearing say bridges will be 100% covered, um, that a lot of the programs will continue to have matches and those can range 5%, 30%. And so as we're putting together the capital budget and program, we're anticipating that we will need to build in um, funding for those expanded capital matches. So considering both the, the bipartisan infrastructure legislation that was recently passed, um, as well as increased capacity by increases in um, real estate assessments, there will be clearly enough space and room if we need to do additional borrowing uh, and still stay within our statutory limits. Indeed, the, the um, estimates that we have for our local capital um, matches under IIJA um, will come nowhere near the $10 billion of room we have left. So we will stay very comfortably uh, under there uh, for the time being. Um, also, um, Ms. Dunn, I wanted to get a perspective on the type of professionals that we'll be using um, on these projects. Um, I know one of the issues that you know I've consistently raised you know, through my time as chair of this committee and also member of council is make sure that we're providing opportunities for a diverse portfolio of professionals, both from the banking side, as well as the FA side, as well as other professionals like bond council. So you, can you give us a perspective on uh, that status for the record? Sure. Thank you, Chair Green. Uh, good morning, Jackie Dunn, City Treasurer. From the financial services um, professional perspective, the Treasurer's Office, what we like to do is establish pools that we pre-qualify for per, per professionals, both, as you indicated, you know, on the underwriting side, but also um, financial advisors, bond and disclosure councils. Um, we also pre-qualify smaller vendors like printers, verification agents um, who are familiar with our credit and able to um, support us on transactions and um, our borrowing related to this authorization would likely take place in July or August of 2023. So several months before that, what we do is put out an RFI for underwriter selection. Um, we certainly consider, as you're aware, the um, MWDBE status on our syndicate team. And so um, what we do is select a senior underwriter and then for uh, other firms that will support that team and also give us diverse perspectives on um, rating agency strategies, rates that we should be looking for um, to market the bonds, sell bonds for the city. Historically, um, because we haven't selected a team yet for this coming transaction, um, three of the city's top 10 underwriters uh, by designations are uh, minority owned firms. That would be Siebert, Loop, and Ramirez. Um, and then uh, we achieve similar percentages on the other um, service areas, financial advisors. We have co-counsels supporting transactions 
um, one being a minority owned firm and one majority owned firm or sometimes uh, two minority owned firms. Um, same thing with bond and disclosure councils. We have co-councils. And so that structure really allows us to ensure that we're getting diverse representation and really including um, a, a number of perspectives and experiences on those transactions for us. And and, and, and thank you for that information, um, Treasurer Dunn. And I know it's important to include um, diverse um, owned firms. And you made reference to um, that you just um, testified to. Um, in reference to those firms, um, well, a couple quick questions. I know Councilmember Jones had a question. What is the current aging of the pools? I believe you're currently going through um, reauthorization of one of those teams um, that you made reference to um, to select a new pool. I just want to make sure I have a full perspective of the time period for uh, reauthorization of various pools for those professionals and um, firms that you just referenced? Sure. On the underwriting side, um, we established new pools last summer, um, and so that is good for four years. Uh, there are 15 firms identified as senior yeah. underwriters, and the three um, firms that I listed, the, minor the minority-owned firms, Loop, Ramirez, and Siebert, um, are qualified to support all of the city's credits. Um, we also have diverse representation in that co-manager space for those smaller underwriting firms. Um, and, and, and I'm sorry, one point of information. When you say authorized to manage all the city's debts, are you making reference to them being um, qualified to be book runners on those? Correct. They're qualified as uh, book runners, not just for the city's geo credit or service agreement, but also for airport, PGW, and um, water. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then we're currently um, have an, an open RFP for um, bond and disclosure councils for the city's geo credit and also for the airport. Okay. And what about FAs? Uh, oh, thank you. We recently um, completed the RFP for um, financial advisors for all of the city's credits and three of the four selected um, are minority owned firms the fourth is a majority owned firm but is based in um, city of philadelphia and so for airport and pgw they have two firms and for water and geo we have a pool of three advisors that we rotate um, across so we're proud to have um, representation from women and minority owned firms for those services and then um, one other uh, question how do you make the distinction between uh, minority owned firms and um, minority partners or principals at majority firms who are the responsibility um, party or partner at those firms? Sure, so we look at both um, uh, both criteria. We do follow the law departments uh, and um, OEO uh, memorandum regarding um, uh, representation at the partnership level, as you indicated, um, but we also, uh, in the co-counsel role, make sure that we select true minority owned firms, uh, not just counting the senior partner as representation. So sometimes we're able to achieve um, representation on both ends of the transaction, depending on who that senior partner is. But we do also work with large and smaller minor true minority owned firms. So based on that, um, based on your testimony, is the goal to not only have representation by um, minority partners or um, principals at various firms that may be majority firms, um, but that if there is a minority firm involved as well, trying to get um, equity on both sides. Correct. We yes, we look at both. Um, we don't strictly count that lead partner as you know achieving participation. Um, sometimes we're fortunate to be able to have representation on that majority owned side as well as having uh, a, pre a pure minority owned firm, um, whether they're a smaller firm or a larger firm that can do all the same services as um, you know where a lead partner would would count. And then um, finally, and from our previous conversations and also you know last year which, where we did a lot of refundings, my understanding is that we don't anticipate a lot of refundings if at all this year. And so um, as Ms. Waxman stated, most of this um, financing will more likely occur in next calendar year of 2023. Correct. Um, we were quite active across all of the city's credits um, the last 18 months or so. Um, 
with where interest rates were and also with the um, structure of the city's um, debt portfolio and what was um, eligible for refunding at those time periods. So it was a very fortunate alignment given rates were at um, all time, what looks to be all time lows. Um, we do continue to monitor just to see if there are any new opportunities um, with our financial advisors. We frequently get um, refunding updates from underwriters who are covering our credit. So we're always looking to see if we can reduce the city's um, you know, debt service costs when it matches with our um, debt management policy. And um, I would now like to recognize Councilmember Jones. I'm sure you've been I'm getting a lot of interesting emails and calls Treasurer Dunn over the past week um, regarding the certain turbulence in the financial markets and people providing different ideas and suggestions. No, no need to comment. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Council Member Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for um, focusing in on the prosperity uh, by way of construction bridges infrastructure that we may be uh, about to enter into a, a age of prosperity. But I'd like to go back to some of the logistical aspects of, you know, we've had a 10 year backlog of capital projects uh, for 10 years, uh, meaning that we have not been able to ready major highway, major um, infrastructure projects, it is a slow, methodical process. That's number one. How do we um, intend to beef up, if you would, the review process so that a bridge like at 41st in um, Palton doesn't take 10 years uh, to complete? And by way of Chairman uh, Green's comment, about inclusion, about diversity. It's my understanding that we haven't had a director of uh, the of the minority uh, review process for six months since Ms. Harper left. I understand that we have gone from 18 employees, uh, reviewers, many of them, that go on these sites and actually check for participation, go review the contracts, and actually look for compliance. We've gone from 18 employees to eight. So I went to public school. So bear with me. How do you intend to receive all of this influx of activities and not um, be prepared internally um, to absorb it? And then one more for bonus points. I, in another life, as Chairman Green will tell you, used to run what was then called the Minority Business Enterprise Council. One of the rules and guides was to never, ever allow the procurement department to oversee compliance because that is a conflict of interest. If I'm trying, my, my pressure is to move contracts, get things paid for, bought, and I got this check off that I have to do, a box that I have to take care of called minority inclusion, there is a tendency, a, 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 you know, a reluctance to want to wait to develop that. And it is a inherent conflict. So all those questions and more inquiring minds want to know. Thank you. And I think you are highlighting some really a lot of the questions and issues we are discussing about how do we, you know, make the most out of this unique federal opportunity. Um, and so uh, that process is underway. The policy office, OTIS, are looking at our project delivery system and what do we need. So I already mentioned that we anticipate we will have to add funding uh, on the capital budget side for the matches, but we are also in the process of developing the FY23 operating budget. And part of that conversation is um, what operating things because you know to to double or triple the volume of capital projects we're doing obviously when we're already struggling to do it with our existing structure and resources we we know that we can't be like no it'll be fine so there is definitely work underway to evaluate um 
the structures we are using, the processes, the project management, and then what resources are needed. And and there are then, you know, obviously a lot of tensions in that. You know, if if we went all in on IIJA, it's and there's other needs that the city has. And so we'll be working through that. And similarly, um, looking at the staffing at, and so what they're looking at is not just engineers at streets, but was actually a multi-department um, evaluation underway, looking at commerce and OEO, looking at procurement. What do we need in law? Who's going to be doing a whole bunch more contracts? Uh, HR, because staffing up for this will be a whole thing. And so trying to develop a uh, citywide interdepartmental approach to figuring out the project delivery and the resources needed. So that is in process. We're not done yet. Um, and part of that is looking at places like OEO and the staffing there. Um, I can't speak directly towards the current hiring um, rate and what they're doing to backfill. Obviously, the funding is still there for those positions. So as budget director, I can say that. But getting people into those positions is a different process. Um, and, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm sure you guys are looking at this too. The, the great resignation, the challenges in filling positions is hitting us across city government and creates some real challenges. And so we're already seeing lots of articles that we're not alone as a city feeling like this money is coming. Are we prepared? Will we be able to hire? Engineers will be in demand. Construction will be in demand. Um, you know, project management and how are we going to make sure that we're staffed up? And so I don't have answers on the how yet. Um, I can at least tell you that we share those very real concerns. And that's why we're evaluating that as we're putting together the FY23 budget. So I appreciate that as we go into the budget process, Mr. Chairman, we will be looking at those kinds of issues. Yes, prosperity is good, but it has to be equal prosperity for all. And um, we are not going to get in our lifetime this kind of influx to repair infrastructure like this. But if if the wave goes over the city and it just misses the um, black and brown businesses, that isn't a total victory. So that's one. And question um, is the eligible match that you mentioned, is can that be achieved through state dollars? So I think that's what we're looking at. Every capital project usually winds up being a puzzle. And so looking at how much is flowing through the state that'll come to us that then we can use, how much are we gonna have to really do locally with geo dollars? How do we put all that together? Um, you know, we're a big fan. If we can get somebody else to pay for our stuff, that's what we're always trying to do. Uh, we wanna maximize that. But so, so we will attempt that, but we know there will still be a, a a local effort in order to draw down these federal dollars, but we will certainly be looking to see how many state dollars we can get into those pots. So having said on that side uh, of the uh, equation, it is always compelling that you want to build baby build. Mm -hmm. And I get it. People, departments are going to push for that, but building it right um, is as important as building it at all. And so the more we can do joint ventures that you mentioned, the more we can include um, under the professional service side, under the supply services and equipment side, and under the construction side, given that kind of inclusion and balance, I think will be, will be what we're looking for. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilmember Jones. Um, Councilmember Dom. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, uh, Marissa and Jackie, for your testimony. I just have a couple quick questions. Have we issued, do we have bonds that have been issued and we have money sitting on the sidelines that has not been invested yet? And if so, any idea of that total amount? Sure. So we um, do have active bond accounts that are in the process of being spent down, but those are all uh, with investment managers. And how much would you say that we have sitting on the sidelines waiting to be invested? Very, I think our, I'm happy to give you our cash percentage, but it's it's very low. Okay. Um, it's primarily just for um, the city's consolidated cash, like the largest cash pool and our um, sort of average turnover or churn is about three to four months. So we do have a cash component given that short term need. Okay, and so just want to make sure I understand what we're talking about today. Uh, have, have we issued or we, or we haven't issued the bonds we were authorized to issue for fiscal year 21's capital budget? 
Is that correct? The authorization before you this morning is will be part of the transaction um, that we pursue in the summer of 2023, so July, August timeframe. Okay, but was that for the capital budget of 21? No, these are so are you asking for did the last the FY21 yeah. bond issuance happen yet? Yes. Yes. That would that was part of our transaction from um, July 2021. Okay, and so I'm just trying to understand like where we have the the plan is for fiscal year 21 and 22 that we're going to have a combined issuance in 24 that will be for July of 23. Is that the plan? Yes, there's usually a lagged cycle, so it comes to this body first and then we issue um, based on current spending needs every two years for the GO. Okay, so is it, is it typically a year to two two year lag? I think at least in recent history, it's there's been a uh, issuance every two years. Okay. I don't know, Marissa, if there's any other context you'd want to share on your end. No, I think the the lag is normal and okay. expected, and the you know bundling two years at a time is what I've seen. So I guess the other the other question I have is why I'm asking these questions is interest rates appear to be going up, and so uh, interest rates in July of 23 might look very different than they do today. So is there any kind of analysis we should be doing to determine uh, is it better to advance the borrowing versus the potential interest rate costs we'll have down the road? Have we done any kind of analysis in that area? We do look, we do talk about that. Um, so prior to our last um, uh, transaction, which I just wanted to correct myself, that included the FY19 and FY20 authorizations. So 21 and 22 will be a part of the next uh, borrowing. Right. Um, but we did look to see if we would want to change that that time frame, maybe borrow more. Um, at that time, we determined no based on spending needs. But that is a question that we that the departments within finance collaborate on to see what makes sense. And then, um, you know, a concern we would have is making sure you're not going to market for the next issuance when you still have um, bonds outstanding that you're currently spending on. So that's also a consideration. Right. Okay, but I guess so. That's good to hear. We're looking at that because if interest rates spike up, which it could happen, um, I'd rather be borrowing today at today's rates than two years from you know five or six percent interest rates. But someone needs to do that analysis to see if that's even economically smart for us to look at. So that's basically my questions, Mr. Chair. Thank you all for your testimony. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Dom. Um, I do have a quick question, Ms. Waxman, and. I was looking at testimony and when I was when I was looking to break down different categories and I wanted to get some perspective on the current status of the street lighting legislation or the street lighting project, which my understanding is still being negotiated um, and the contract was supposed to come to finance a little while ago. I actually maybe am going to ask my deputy budget director for capital, Tavari Brown. Um, Tavari, mm -hmm. do you have any uh, more recent context on the street lighting capital funding? And you are on mute, Tavari. Um, Jay Brown, capital budget uh, deputy director. So the street lighting funding is currently found in this uh, in this loan authorization under the municipal buildings category. Um, the funding is found in, in the OIT's budget, but within this authorization, you see it under municipal buildings and that tranche of uh, funding. Uh, we've had some communication with uh, OIT in regards to uh, deciding when the funding is going to be available and uh, what locations. That's still kind of being decided at this point. Obviously, the funding isn't available as of today because we're that's why we're here today, right? But um, once it's available, we'll be in a better position to kind of decide on the timeline of it, of when they can start implementing the project. But OIT, uh, MDO, obviously the budget office and uh, council are kind of working together to decide the locations and um, when to implement the project. So just to follow up on that, so the line item in um, this authorization of the $76 million, um, well, we'll say $77 million, and the street lighting project will be part of that but um, based on 
the combined testimony of uh, Ms. Waxman and um, Trojan Dunn, a lot of the spending has not occurred until calendar year of 23. Um, but I was under the impression well, that we were trying to move forward on the street. A lot of the funding, so a lot of the funding for uh, this particular loan authorization will be spent over the course of uh, the next fiscal or the next calendar year. That's just the nature of utilizing the oldest funding first. However, that particular project can be advanced earlier. So once we decide that we want to go forward with that, we'll we'll use those funds current uh, now as opposed to using a, a different line. Gotcha. OK, and then it would and, and then because my understanding that's a multi year project, that contract would have to come to council. OK. Thank you so much. Are there any other questions for the witnesses that are here for today? Uh, seeing none, I want to thank all the witnesses for coming this morning um, for this testimony on this bill. Um, Mr. Inuzi, will you please call the, the next panel of witnesses to testify regarding bill number 220116. Uh, I also note that for this bill, there is an amendment um, that will that has been circulated for this bill as well. Daniel Cassidy, Vice President for Technical Operations at PGW, will be joined by Craig Campbell, who is the Supplier Diversity Program Administrator, also at PGW. Um, thank you very much. Um, good morning, Mr. Cassidy, Mr. Campbell. Morning, Chairman Green. Okay. Um, Morning, Chairman. You are both connected. Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. My name is Daniel J. Cassidy. I'm the President of Technical Operations for the Philadelphia Gas Works. Um, please proceed with your testimony. Okay. So I'm appearing today on behalf of PGW in support of Bill Number 220116, which would approve an amendment to the fiscal year 2022 capital budget for PGW. PGW's fiscal year 2020 capital budget was approved in an amount totaling $127,708,000. The spending authorization provided for in this approved budget primarily supports a program plan to replace existing plant and facilities to ensure that PGW continues to operate its assets at a high standard of safety and reliability. Additionally, funding is also approved to improve efficiency and increase revenues through new load additions, which will allow PGW to minimize future rate increases for our customers. Within the ordinance approved, approving this budget, spending was authorized for the period September 1st, 2019 through August 31st, 2021. In monitoring the implementation of PGW's fiscal year 2020 capital budget program, compliance issues were identified that needed to be addressed. There are three projects approved in the fiscal year 2020 capital budgets where the project completion timeline will ex exceed the approved lifespan. To remedy this issue, GW requests that the fiscal year 2022 capital budget be amended to reflect reauthorization for these previously approved projects in the fiscal year 2020 capital budget. Total combined spending for the original authorization and the reauthorization will not be greater than original authorization for two of the projects while one project has increased by $100,000 over the original authorization. City Council approval is required since neither PGW nor the Gas Commission have the authority to extend project license. So in summary, PGW respectfully asks the committee to finance for a favorable report on this bill and that City Council approve and authorize an amended fiscal year 2022 total budget of $149,132,000 this is an increase of $1,653,000 for the previous approval. PGW also respectfully requests a suspension of rules for initial reading of this bill. And I can take questions. Greg and I can take Thank you very much. Um, wanted to also um, get into some of the um, MWBE um, aspects of its capital budget. I know PGW is an entity different than the city um, focuses primarily on the spend um, as opposed to the goals. So if we can get some more perspective in that regard regarding this um, capital request. Sure, I can talk to that. Good morning. My name is Craig Campbell. I'm a supplier diversity program administrator for the Philadelphia Gas Works. 
Um, after a detailed review of the amended FY 2022 capital budget, PGW's final EBE forecast low was reported as $10,584,600 um, or 11.04% for the low. And our final DBE forecast high was reported as $18,963,200 or 19.78%. Um, 19.78% for the DBE high. Um, it's important to realize that the capital program is only one avenue for DBEs to share and contract opportunities with PGW. The other is associated with its operating budget and related purchasing opportunities. Um, I also want to draw attention of the increase um, of PGW's um, significant growth to our DBE participation goals. Um, we ended in FY17, FY18, we had a goal of 17%. Um, currently in FY22, we uh, are now up to 25%. Currently, as of February 2022, we are at 23.44%. Um, we do expect to meet that goal, if not exceed it, um, but we do want to you know, bring some attention to the growth we've had over the years. Thank you uh, for that testimony. And uh, Mr. Cassie, if you could give some for more perspective in reference to the nature of the capital expenditure products um, to provide that information for uh, members of the committee. Uh, yes, can. So, so there are three projects. One project is uh, regards uh, replacing piping for our uh, vaporization systems in rich plant uh, this project was originally approved for 1.25 million dollars and it was delayed last summer because of some lng trucking activities uh, the project could not be finished by august 31st because of that other activity in plant but we did finish it shortly after uh, the second project is in our west philly district office uh, a rear wall structure project and that project is in the amount of of uh, Five hundred and seventy-two thousand um, dollars. The project and the, the what we're adding to to move is five hundred twenty-nine thousand dollars. The project has been delayed uh, due to reevaluation of options to address uh, the district offices. Uh, the third project is uh, a boiler in our eighteen hundred building, eighteen hundred North Ninth Street, for three hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars, which was originally approved for two hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars. Uh, the project was rebid last year because of um, lower than um, lower than acceptable uh, DBE participation. We did get better participation in the second bid. However, due to the pandemic and supply chain issues, the price went by about $100,000 overestimated. So that is the, uh, that's the summary of the third project. Okay. I just want to note for the record that um, Jamila McClendon, Esquire, Executive Director of the Philadelphia Gas Commission, submitted written testimony in, in this regard regarding the um, request for this committee. Um, Mr. Campbell, I know in the past I've talked with Dr. Erica Patterson regarding procurement initiatives um, at PGW. Can you give um, some more um, context to that increase from the 17 to 25 percent? I think you said you're currently at 23 percent and what steps were taken by PGW to get to that uh, increase? Uh, sure thing. So um, in FY 2021 to FY 2022, we issued and awarded a total of six best value RDs to minority and women-owned businesses. Um, our overall MWDSBE participation rate increased significantly, significantly from 14.54 at the end of fiscal year 2018 to 21.64 at the end of fiscal 2021. Um, we did expanded community outreach efforts to get contractors to meet their WM DSBE subcontracting commitments, and uh, we revised procurement rules contributed to the increase in participation. We really see the impact of the revised procurement rules during this fiscal year, FY 2022, with the introduction of the best value procurement. Um, six best value procurement contractors were recently awarded a total of contract value of $15 million. Almost 82% of the best value contracts were awarded to minority and women-owned businesses, either directly or indirectly through subcontracting. 
Much of much work will be completed during fiscal year 2022. Um, PGW's MW DSBE participation goal for fiscal 2022 is 25% and will increase to 28% for fiscal 2023. Our continuous outreach efforts include building strategic partnerships with national and neighborhooding, neighboring advocacy groups such as EMSDC, um, WBEC East, the African American Chamber of Commerce, the Asian American Chamber of Commerce, the Greater Philadelphia Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and the IA, which is the National Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce, as well as the Enterprise Center. As corporate members, strategic partners of these groups, it allows PGW to not only network, but share our commitment to the utilization and inclusion of small, diverse, and local businesses on open procurement opportunities. Furthermore, it presents an opportunity to educate and bring awareness to those who want to know more about PGW as an organization, but more importantly, to do business with PGW. We continuously participate and host events to promote PGW procurement opportunities and support our strategic partners. Our early staple events are as follows. Um, EMSDC Roar Conference and Matchmaking Events, the WBEC East um, Doing Business Series, as well as OEOs Doing Business with City Six. In FY21, we also launched our Vendor Spotlight Series, which we do on a quarterly basis to help MBEs or WBEs showcase their capabilities, not only to the supply chain, to our internal client departments and primes as well. This is a spinoff of our vendor meet and greet meetings that we conduct as well on a regular basis. Thank you, Mr. Campbell, for that information. Just wanted to remind the committee that a few years ago, um, this body passed best value legislation um, that would allow uh, the city to look at factors in rewarding contracts beyond just the lowest responsible bidder by using a best value process, um, which is something that I you know, push very strongly. Um, through the legislation because I've seen best value used in other cities as a way to provide a more diverse spending uh, of procurement dollars. Um, PGW had then followed the city's efforts in doing best value and amended procurement rules to bring in best value. And I know through the, um, the testimony that Mr. Campbell provided, uh, it seems like we're getting to see some of the, the fruits of that labor uh, to be able to diversify um, the spending in PTW has done by using best value and, and following the city's lead. Uh, Point of they... information. Yes, Councilmember Jones. Mr. Chairman, um, thank you for your leadership at the uh, Gasworks to uh, support and promote this as a council person. Um, the fruits of, the la of your labor have been presented. But think about that decision this body made uh, under um, the chairmanship of uh, Marion Tasco not to sell PGW to a private interest and question whether or not any of this would have mattered had we done so. Uh, that is a rhetorical question for absolutely. It's sarcastic, uh, rhetorical. Well, all no, I'm, saying, I'm not saying sarcastic, just saying the rhetorical question. Oh, it was sarcastic. Uh, okay, <laughs> I was didn't want to make that characterization of your question, but uh, definitely I, I agree with you. Some of the initiatives that we've been doing at PGW, um, Councilmember Jones, you made reference to best value. That is something that you know we've had some challenges at PGW in the past for making improvements. I think best value has allowed us to look at things beyond just the large responsible bidder, as well as other conversation that we're having at PGW and you, Councilmember Jones, as a member of the Gas Commission, you know we've been having this conversation and we've had a conversation in this committee regarding the diversification study uh, of PGW and with the bipartisan infrastructure bill provide some opportunities um, to look at how we can use some of the ideas suggestion that study as possible um, initiatives at P PGW using that new those new federal dollars. Uh, so I want to thank you, Councilmember Jones. Are there any additional questions for members of this committee for the witnesses that we have here this morning? Seeing and hearing none, I want to thank the witnesses for being here um, this morning. Are there any other questions or comments for 
from members of the committee or the public. Before we go into the public meeting. Okay, seeing and hearing none. Um, thank you so much, everyone that's here. Uh, I want to thank all the panels and witnesses for their participation today. We value your opinions and now I'd like to invite all panels and witnesses uh, to please disconnect from the meeting before we go into our public meeting. Uh, we'll now pause the proceedings briefly as multiple participants leave the hearing. Thank you, Mayor Councilman Green. Thank you. OK, this concludes the public hearing of this committee. We will now go into a public meeting to consider action we've taken on the bills before the Finance Committee today. And we'll take a brief moment to make sure that all committee members are ready to go into the public meeting. Thank you all for your patience. Um, we will now convene the public meeting. Mr. Iron Newsy, will you please call the roll to take attendance? Members that are in attendance, please indicate that you are present when your name is called. And feel free to say a few brief words when responding so that we can see your image and it can be displayed on screen when you speak. Council Member Cindy Bass. Good morning, still I am present. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No problem. Councilmember Allen Dahm. Good morning, Mr. Chair. I am present too. Councilmember Helen Gim. Present. Councilmember Curtis Jones Jr. Present. Councilmember David O. I'm present. Councilmember Maria Canuna Sanchez. Good morning, Mr. Chair. I'm present. Councilmember Mark Squilla. Good morning, Mr. Chair, colleagues, I'm present. And Chair Green. Thank you, Mr. Anuzi. I am also present. I would also note that all members are here, and I also see that none of you are wearing masks. I wonder why. <laughs> Is there some new information that came out today or yesterday? I don't know. Today. Yes, yes. That means we're making <laughs> progress, making progress. Um, thank you. At this point, I would like to um, go into our public meeting. We do have a quorum for our public meeting, and I would like to recognize Council Member Squilla for a motion on the amendment for Bill Number 220116. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I offer an amendment to Bill Number 2. 20116. A copy of the amendment has been circulated to all members of the committee, and I move that the amendment to Bill Number 220116 be approved. Second. It has been moved and seconded by Councilmember Jones that amendment to Bill Number 220116 be approved. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Uh, the motion carries an amendment to bill number 220116 has been approved. I now like to recognize council member Squilla for a motion regarding bill number 220116 as amended. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the bill number 220116 as amended be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended as to permit the, this bill at the next session of council. Second. Um, uh, Councilmember Squilla, did you could you just restate your motion? I move the bill number two two zero one one six as amended be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation, and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit the first reading of this bill at the next session of council. Second. Thank you, thank you, Councilmember Squilla. It's been moved and probably seconded by Councilmember. Jones that bill number 220116 as amended be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 
those opposed the motion carries thank you so much i now like to recognize again council member squilla for a motion regarding bill number 210827 Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the bill number 210827 be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended as to permit the first reading of this bill at the next session of council. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded by Councilmember Jones that bill number 210827 be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those, aye. those opposed, <clears throat> the motion carries. Thank you. Uh, before we conclude the business before this committee, I would like to recognize Councilmember Maria Kiana Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to make a notation, given the conversation that we had this morning. Um, as you know, in your role at the National League of Cities and your work, your work around best values, um, really want to elevate um, the cautionary note that Councilmember Jones did around the staffing related to minority participation in the city of Philadelphia. This next round of federal um, relief programs are going to be, some of them are going to be competitive. Our inability to put and manage projects um, is at, at a serious level. You know, just this morning we had an appropriations hearing where the administration made a decision that they did not want to retro salaries of non-represented exempt employees. I would caution us that these are the same employees, architects, engineers, project managers who are managing some of this work. And we're in a, just like everybody else, we're in a competitive environment and we will continue to lose talent and expertise um, if we don't appreciate the employees. But more importantly, creating real timelines for putting money on the ground is hugely important. And so <clears throat> I appreciate this morning's discussion and some of the work that has been done um, as we prepare for the budget. We should have a very lengthy conversation about timelines around this project management. I know district council people are feeling it in our capital budgets and our and, and the work that we're doing in Parks and Rec um, related to some of this work. We continue to lose staff. So um, we are not doing and not meeting the kind of goals we should be meeting and definitely not the kind of goals articulated by the administration. And that will continue to be seen in the numbers um, and in our inability to get these projects done. So I hope that our council colleagues were listening and that, we, and that the administration really comes better prepared in the budget to address these issues um, as we move forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Council Member Sanchez, also chair of the Appropriations Committee. Um, this, your statement is very spot on considering all of the things we talked about today, both in your committee and this committee and what's in front of us as we prepare for the mayor's budget address on March 31st. Uh, thank you all. I hear the city hall bell going off, so I'm trying to allow you to reclaim your time. So this concludes the business for the community of finance today. Thank you all very much for your attendance and have a great day. Hello. Sure.